All right, so it's a great pleasure to welcome Pavla Boisheda Alvarez from the IAS, who will be talking about the center of the small quantum group. Thank you for the introduction, and thank you to the organizers for inviting me to talk here. Um, and before I start, let me give a brief introduction to this uh, project. So this is a joint work with uh, Beshu Kafnikov, Shannon uh, Vassaro. And um, yeah, it studies the small quantum group and at the center of the small quantum group. And this is a question that has been uh, already looked at by um, uh, Kartnikov, Lichowska, and Kui. But they look at, uh, at this uh, uh, and understand this looking um, at the cohomology of certain coherent sheaves on the Springer resolution, on the finite Springer resolution. And uh, in this project, we're going to uh, uh, look at the center and compare it to the homology of uh, some affine Springer fiber, uh, an affine Springer fiber that I'll introduce um, shortly. And uh, the, the, well, there's a lot of uh, somebody is not muted. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Um, and uh, right. And um, this, so this uh, small quantum group is an algebra in characteristic zero that I'll introduce um, uh, shortly, but this is um, analogous to uh, the Frobenius kernel um, in characteristic P, you know, as uh, studied by Anderson, Janssen, and, and Zirkel, this connection. And I'll say briefly, sort of uh, explain this connection a bit and these analogies a bit uh, more uh, later, and sort of will say what, what things sort of work in characteristic P and what things need a little bit more care, although, yeah, they should also work. Um, okay, so uh, let me say, uh, let me begin with some uh, notation. So G here is going to be a semi-simple group, which for simplicity, we're going to take to be uh, simply connected. And uh, we're going to fix all the standard things. So we're going to fix a Borel and a maximal torus. And uh, we have uh, Langland's dual uh, data to these things. Uh, which we'll also need. And um, we'll uh, yeah have notation for the Lie algebra and the root system. So this is the root system uh, for G. So it would be dual for uh, the Langlands dual. Uh, and of particular relevance will be the uh, co-weight lattice of G or the weight lattice of the Langlands dual group. And we will denote this by uh, lambda. And this will be will appear uh, several at several points. Um, and yeah, and then in, uh, notation for the file group and the affine file group. Um, okay, and some um, geometric spaces that uh, were, we already saw yesterday, so um, I didn't want to introduce again. Um, these are the affine uh, flag variety uh, and the affine Grassmannian, both for the group G, um, uh, which, yeah, as we saw yesterday, are some sort of, uh, can be seen as some sort of quotients. Uh, but um, since they were already defined, let me not. Um, go into this. And let me just say that the affine flag variety um, classifies uh, Iwahori uh, subgroups. And uh, with this, we can define the affine Springer fiber that um, this project is going to relate the center to. And so, right, so how, uh, so for any, any element in the loop, Lie algebra, we can define a certain uh, sub, sub variety of the affine flag variety given by all the Iwahoris that contain this particular element in the Lie, in its uh, Lie algebra. And we're going to consider this for a particular gamma. Uh, we're going to consider it for Ts. So what does Ts mean here? So T is this parameter of the uh, power series. And S is a regular semi-simple element just in the uh, finite uh, Lie algebra. And since we fixed a torus, the maximal torus, we can just assume that this regular semi-simple lies in this, um, uh, in the Lie algebra of this maximal torus. And so what does this um, space look like? Um, so this space has uh, infinitely many components. So it's infinite in some sense, but each of, each of the components is finite dimensional. Um, in fact, each of them uh, is of the same dimension. It's equidimensional, like, uh, uh, regular uh, Springer fibers. Um, and the dimension of this is uh, the dimension of the finite flag variety. Um, in fact, the finite flag variety is one of these, one of the components of this 
um, space, or I guess infinitely many components of the space are given by the flag variety. Um, and what are some interesting um, some interesting actions on this uh, space that will be relevant later? Um, well, the loop torus uh, centralizes this element TS just because it's a, a commutative group and so acts trivially on its uh, Lie algebra. Um, and because it centralizes the element, it acts on the corresponding um, spring of fiber. Um, and out of this uh, one action of the loop torus, we're going to get two uh, uh, actions that are going to be of interest. The first is just an action of the torus, of the finite torus, um, as a subgroup of this, and then an action of the uh, of uh, of the lattice of co of co weights. And let me just sort of explain. Uh, well, at, at, as close points, we have that uh, this is equal to t square bracket t times lambda. Well, maybe let me just start there. Put quotes that this is um, on on close points. This is true, uh, and so the this this action of lambda. Uh, this action of lambda comes from this um, decomposition here, these close points corresponding to lambda. Um, okay, uh, and uh, right, and so this um, uh, lambda action um, acts on the uh, set of components in a free way. There's uh, the action is free on the set of components, and it has finitely many orbits. In fact, it has um, as many as uh, vial group um, elements. And so uh, this here really what's what it's giving us is a bijection between the affine vial group and the set of uh, components of this space. Um, and just to, to make it more concrete, what does this space look like in the easiest case, in the case of SL2? So in the case of SL2, this is just an infinite chain of P1s, right? So an infinite pearl necklace, if you want, uh, topologically, um, where the action here of lambda is given by translating by two. So it moves this uh, these P1s by two steps so that we have this, this condition that uh, the set of components modulo the lambda action has size, the size of the value. And uh, just as a brief remark, um, the uh, so this uh, here, of course, all the uh, components are just isomorphic to the flag variety, um, but this is no longer true in SL3. And um, already in SL4, you start getting non-smooth components. So the this space, you know, even though it looks very easy for SL2, it starts getting pretty complicated pretty soon. Um, okay, so this is the space whose cohomology we're going to relate to the to the center. But let me now explain to the center of what. So what is this um, small quantum group? Um, so here uh, we're going to consider the quantum group of the Langlands dual um, group here. And what is the quantum group? Well, I'm not going to define it in, uh, carefully, but this is some uh, Hopf algebra uh, over rational functions in Q that deforms the usual enveloping algebra. Um, and what we're going to consider is two uh, interesting integral forms over uh, Laurent polynomials. And we're going to specialize these two integral forms at an Lth root of one. Uh, so we're going to specialize this Q at an Lth root of one for L being an odd prime. Uh, yeah, this is um, just for simplicity, and also this is uh, where the stronger connection with the uh, uh, characteristic P world um, lives. Um, right, and so, um, yeah, as I say here, the these two integral forms have some sort of analogous um, things in the characteristic P world. Um, yeah, which, uh, let me explain, so this is um, analogy. So the first integral form is the katz de Concini quantum group. So this is some sort of version of the quantum group, let me say, uh, with without divided powers. Um, and this is um, analogous to the uh, usual enveloping algebra of, um, uh, of the Lie algebra, which, again, doesn't have uh, divided powers. And um, in opposition to what? In, to the distribution algebra, which does have uh, it's some sort of version of the enveloping algebra with, with divided powers. And so the, the corresponding thing in the quantum group uh, 
is the Lustig quantum group. Uh, so this is some, some sort of uh, integral version of the quantum group with divided powers. Um, right, and so, right, so the, the Katz de Concini quantum group is gonna play the, the role of this enveloping algebra and the Lustig quantum group is gonna play the uh, role of the distribution algebra. Um, and so then what is the small quantum group? Well, the small quantum group, there's a map between the Katz de Concini uh, quantum group and the Lustig quantum group, whose image is finite dimensional and is precisely this small quantum group. And um, in analogy, in the uh, uh, characteristic P world, we have a map from the um, Lie algebra, from the enveloping algebra to the uh, distribution algebra, whose image is finite dimensional, and it's just uh, the restricted enveloping algebra. Um, and so, um, right, and so this this um, statement here in characteristic P somehow is the statement that, right, in characteristic zero, the Lie algebra somehow understands the full representation theory of the group. But in characteristic P, the Lie algebra sort of only understands some first approximation. Um, it doesn't understand the full uh, representation theory. And so this is this um, first approximation, which will be just given by the representations of the Frobenius kernel which is what corresponds to the small quantum group in the characteristic uh, P world. And so we're just looking at the same first approximation, but in the quantum uh, world. Okay, so some further um, um, analogies between these two worlds. So, right, the very important, you know, I just mentioned the Frobenius kernel. And so the Frobenius kernel comes as the kernel of the Frobenius map. So um, this Frobenius map, which you know we know exists in characteristic P, there's also some sort of version of this in the quantum uh, world. This is um, introduced by Lustig, and it's some map from um, the Lustig quantum group to some algebra, which let me just say is some completion of uh, the enveloping algebra. But here, the property that I want is that uh, the finite dimensional representations of this algebra are just given by the representations of the uh, Langlands dual group. And recall that um, we fixed the group G to be simply connected. So the Langlands dual is adjoint. Uh, so, right, the usual uh, for the usual enveloping algebra, the representations, the finite dimensional representations are the same as the simply connected uh, version. But here we want a version whose uh, finite dimensional representations are just uh, the ones of the adjoint type. But here, uh, so once we've defined this Lustig uh, quantum Frobenius is where the big difference comes between the two worlds, between the characteristic P world and the characteristic zero world, uh, is that in the characteristic uh, zero world, the Frobenius only exists sort of once. You can't iterate it because the image here is that some representations of a uh, group in characteristic zero, and there's no Frobenius, you know, in this characteristic zero world, world, uh, you know, group, there's no longer um, a Frobenius. But the, the image in the characteristic P case is another group in characteristic P, and so we can, again, have a, another Frobenius. Um, and this, uh, the fact that here you can only uh, do it once, and in the characteristic P case, you can do it uh, over and over, sort of makes the characteristic P case uh, more a lot more complicated, but at least the first approximation. This is a good um, a good analogy. Um, okay, so um, right, but uh, as I say, so this this Frobenius kernel, which is uh, related to the the small quantum group, is well as its name indicates, uh, just the kernel of this Frobenius map, and in particular, it's a normal subgroup. So a normal subgroup means you're stable under the conjugation action, and the same happens in the in the quantum uh, group. So, because uh, the quantum group, this Lustig quantum group, is a Hopf algebra, it has a Hopf adjoint action on itself. Um, and uh, the property here is that this small quantum group is stable under this Hopf adjoint action. And this, you know, in the same way as being stable under conjugation in the characteristic P world means normal. This being stable under the Hopf adjoint is some sort of, uh, you have some sort of normal Hopf uh, subalgebra, um, um, right, in this 
um, version. And this uh, Frobenius map, you should think of as some sort of quotient by this normal subgroup in the same way as this Frobenius map is a quotient by the Frobenius uh, kernel. And sort of uh, categorically, what this uh, means is that if you have some representation of the Lustig quantum group that you restrict to the small quantum group and it becomes trivial, then it actually came by pullback uh, from this uh, Frobenius. And you know this is the same as with a normal subgroup. You quotient by a normal subgroup, uh, a representation comes from pullback if it's trivial when restricted to uh, that subgroup. Uh, okay, and so with this, these ideas, whoops, uh, uh, let me uh, talk a bit about the center. Um, right, so uh, this this center um, of the uh, Lusty quantum group and of the small quantum group can be understood in terms of this Hopf adjoint action. Um, it's given precisely by the elements in UQ that are fixed by this Hopf um, adjoint action. Uh, of the Lustig quantum group on itself and of the small quantum group on itself. But uh, the point is that the, the uh, Lustig quantum group um, acts uh, on the, the small quantum group. So this small quantum group, uh, so uh, adjoint action extends to the big, to the Lustig quantum group. And hence by this um, uh, quotient property, this induces um, an action of this uh, Langlands uh, dual group on the center of the small quantum group. So this, uh, the center of the small quantum group is not only, uh, you know, some, a vector space, but it's a vector space together with the, you know, with the GL action that will be of interest uh, later on. Um, and, uh, right, and uh, let me just make another brief remark is that the GL invariant part of the center is precisely uh, those uh, elements that are still central as elements of the, uh, big quantum group. Um, so if we intersect the center of the, uh, of the Lustig quantum group with the small quantum group, we get exactly the um, GL invariant elements of the center. OK, and um, let me just um, um, make some uh, comments about the representation theory of this small quantum group. Um, so this uh, small quantum group has a grading by weights in the usual way. We put uh, on, you know, this has generators EI and FI. And we put uh, weights alpha i and minus alpha i respectively on these things. And we can consider the category of uh, uh, graded modules graded with weights such that the action of UQ is compatible with this uh, grading. Uh, and this um, uh, category we will denote by UQ mod graded. And this will be uh, relevant in, um, in the further discussion. And yeah, let me just say a, a, a way of, to think about this category is just as the representation of uh, a Harris Chandra pair, where of the torus and the Lustig quantum group, where the torus is giving you the grading. Um, and one last remark about this uh, graded category is that we have some uh, shift of grading functors, but uh, we can't just shift by any uh, value of lambda. We, we can uh, uh, only shift by a factor of L times lambda. Um, but still, this gives us an action of, of this lattice lambda on this category by uh, shifts of grading. And this action by shifts of grading uh, of the lattice is going to correspond in the uh, geometric world to this lattice action on the Springer fiber that I introduced um, at the beginning. So here we see a bit more um, of uh, the connections. Um, and let me, yeah, so um, then let me just uh, say a few last remarks about the representation theory of this algebra. So uh, the simple modules of this, uh, in this graded uh, category are, you know, given by highest weight uh, in the usual way, but here uh, the, the property, the, diff the different properties that the highest weight actually can be anything, not just the dominant uh, weight, but any, any weight. Um, and the, um, the simple uh, modules of the uh, ungraded version are just given by the lattice quotient L times the lattice. And this just comes because these, right, like the, the, uh, the uh, functor that forgets the grading is just a degrading functor with respect to these uh, change of gradings here. And so this is what, you know, makes you forget this L times lambda because it comes from this, um, change of grading action. 
Um, okay, and then just as a final remark, the, the ones for uh, the um, uh, simple modules for the holistic quantum group, those are just in the usual way given by uh, a dominant highest weight. Um, and uh, right, before uh, then uh, going into, into the ideas of the uh, project, uh, let me just say, so what we're gonna actually look at is not at the full uh, category of representations of this uh, small quantum group, but just as a, at a, at a piece of it, at a regular block. And so what are these regular blocks? Um, so to, to talk about this, let, let me introduce a, a, an action of the affine value group on this lattice. Um, so this action is denoted by dot L, and just like the normal dot action, it's uh, row shifted. Um, and the sub L means that the translation action, the translation um, of the affine value group act by, you know, in a dilated way by this factor L. Um, and with this um, affine value group action, we can uh, state the linkage principle. Um, so this um, is a theorem that states that if you have some non-trivial extension between two simples, then the labels of the simples actually lie in the same uh, W orbit under this dot L action. And so we can just break up the category um, as a direct sum in uh, along these uh, W orbits. So what we're going to do is just look at one of these W orbits, namely the W orbit of zero, uh, which is a regular block. Like the most most of the uh, uh, most of these um, orbits give you uh, uh, equivalent categories, and we're going to just give you we're we're just going to look at one of these um, categories that most of them uh, look like. And uh, right, and we're going to denote the the regular block of uh, the categories just by an upper zero hat for the graded category, for uh, the ungraded category, and also for the lustic uh, quantum group, which all have this decomposition. Um, okay. Um, and so with this, uh, we're ready to um, um, stay, go into the ideas of um, the project. So what are we going to do to understand this uh, center? So what, what we're going to do is we're going to construct um, several maps from different cohomologies into the center. And the first map that we're going to construct is a map from uh, the cohomology of the affine uh, flag variety. Um, and to do this, we're going to use um, a couple of theorems. So the first theorem is, well, I guess, it can be proven uh, using work of Kashawar and Kanasaki together with uh, work of Kashdan and Lustig, or it's uh, uh, stated just as a theorem as this in our work by Archibald Peshwakafnikov and Ginsburg. And this is a statement that the uh, regular block of the Lustig quantum group is equivalent to a certain category of uh, perverse sheaves on the affine Rasmanian. So, right here, this I means Iwahori constructible. So these are constructible sheaves that are constant along the Iwahori orbits. Um, and the second uh, theorem that uh, we're going to need is uh, Beshwakafnikov and Yun, uh, work by Beshwakafnikov and Yun, which states some causal duality equivalence between this category of uh, this, the, the derived category of Iwahori constructible um, uh, sheaves on the affine Grassmannian and a certain category of Iwahori Whitaker sheaves. So, I mean, this is Iwahori Whitaker sheaves. On the affine flag variety. So this category already appeared uh, yesterday at uh, Laura's talk and she also didn't explain it and I'm also not gonna explain it. Um, but let me just say that it's uh, some uh, full subcategory of the category of constructible sheaves on the affine uh, flag variety, and that's the only thing that we will uh, need. Um, okay, and so, um, right, and so the, the, the first uh, uh, lemma um, of the joint work uh, is a construction of a map uh, from this cohomology to the center of the Lustig quantum group. Of, or of this, the center of this block of the Lustig quantum group. Uh, 
and whose image actually lies in the small quantum field. And just to, to understand uh, how to construct this, this um, map, let me say the, the cohomology acts just on the category of constructible sheaves of the affine flag variety as follows. So each, every uh, constructible sheave is isomorphic to the tensor product of itself with a constant sheave. And we can understand the, uh, the cohomology as just the X algebra of the constant sheaf. And so this gives us uh, transformations of the constant sheaf to itself shifted cohomologically. And so, um, you know, these gives us then uh, natural transformations from each uh, uh, sheaf to itself shifted by I, cohomologically shifted by I. Uh, and because this Iwahori Whitaker category is just a full subcategory, we get a similar action in this um, subcategory. Um, but now we can use these equalities, uh, the first, the causal duality um, equivalence, and then uh, the um, archibald vestro kopnikov and Ginsburg equality uh, to our equivalence to give us um, some action first on the uh, Iwahori constructible sheaves on the Grassmannian and then on the derived category of the block, of the regular block of um, um, the Lustig quantum group. Uh, but here, uh, the property, the important property is that the, the cohomology of this uh, space is pure. And the properties of this uh, causal duality equivalence um, give us that pure uh, maps go to uh, maps that don't change uh, the cohomological degree. So these action uh, in, in this category doesn't change cohomological uh, degree. And so gives us an endomorphism of the identity functor, or in other words, a central element. And so this is how we construct um, uh, uh, central elements from the cohomology of the affine uh, flag variety. And um, yeah, just a brief remark about uh, why it lies in the small quantum group. Um, yeah, let me just say the small quantum group can be understood uh, or the category of representations of the small quantum group can be understood as uh, the category of modules inside this uh, Lustig quantum group category of a certain algebra. And so to check that uh, it lies in this small quantum group, you just need to uh, check that this map uh, that we construct is compatible with, uh, with this um, action by this algebra. Um, yeah, let me just say it like this. Um, and just final remarks about uh, this is this, this action of the cohomology can actually uh, uh, be constructed purely algebraically. Um, and, uh, to, and this um, algebraic construction in characteristic P is easy to do because of this property that the Frobenius only uh, exists once. So it, 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 there's an algebraic construction that sort of only um, um, can be done in one step. And so in characteristic zero, it could be done algebraically in an easy way. But in characteristic P, because the Frobenius sort of iterates, you would need to iterate this construction over and over, and it sort of gets complicated. So the algebraic construction um, can be done, but it's more complicated of this map. Uh, and of course, this theorem is part of ongoing uh, work, but is not yet uh, proven in characteristic P. Uh, and also this property of lying in UQ is a bit more subtle because uh, right, the, the image of the Frobenius in the case of the quantum group is a semi-simple category, but in characteristic P is not uh, semi-simple and this um, makes life harder, but you know, Things could pro uh, presumably be fixed, but this is in characteristic P, things get more complicated. Um, okay. So, yeah, so the second, so now we're going to construct a second map from uh, now from the cohomology of this affine Springer fiber um, that I uh, promised. And so, um, this um, affine Springer fiber comes with a, a torus action, as I um, explained. And so we can. Um, Look at this uh, theorem, Goretzky, Kodwitz, and McPherson to try to understand the um, torus equivariant cohomology. Um, and so this, this theorem says that uh, under certain uh, nice assumptions, which I'm uh, not going to state, but are satisfied in the case of this um, affine Springer fiber, uh, 
um, the uh, equivalent cohomology of uh, the torus equivalent cohomology of the space X can be um, explicitly understood as right as as always as a sub uh, uh, space in the in the fixed point equivalent cohomology under the localization map, but can be determined by uh, one dimensional orbits by conditions coming from one dimensional torus orbits. And so uh, this is the theorem that we're going to use um, in the following uh, proposition. So uh, yeah, just to state it, let me just say, I'm not going to um, go into how to construct it, but there exists some sort of flat deformation of our small quantum group with base, uh, the Lie algebra of the torus. And this uh, flat deformation also has a graded version and you know has a, a regular block. And so if we look at the regular block of this, uh, you know, of this deformed um, algebra and of the graded modules of this deformed algebra, we can explicitly compute the center. And the center is going to be exactly this uh, T equivalent cohomology. And just let me um, make some brief remarks about how to use this uh, GKM um, result. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look at uh, the um, uh, generic point of this um, base and at co-dimension one points of this base. And so what happens at these, so at the generic point, generic point, uh, this category here uh, just becomes semi-simple. So uh, category semi-simple. And so the conditions of the center are very easy to understand. Um, and these conditions are exactly going to basically come down to the same as the fixed points. The conditions given by the fixed points in this, uh, you know, in this goretzky kotlik mcpherson picture. Um, and now if we look at co-dimension one points, uh, this category is going to break up um, as the direct sum of sort of the same category, but for SL2. And this SL2 conditions are going to give us uh, the one-dimensional one dimensional orbit conditions, which, right, like the, this one dimensional orbits here are also in the um, affine Springer fiber are also sort of determined just by SLT uh, considerations. And so we get, right, uh, we understand this just by um, looking at the generic point, looking at co-dimension one points and saying that looking at those points is enough to understand uh, the center. Um, Right, and so uh, right, so this gives us uh, this result. But then, uh, of course, the problem is that after reducing, uh, you know, after taking some central reduction, the center, you know, might grow. Uh, so the only thing that we um, can say is that the the cohomology of this uh, affine Springer fiber injects into the center of the graded uh, regular block, and uh, uh, in in this process of degrading. We can similarly say that the the translation invariant elements uh, inject into the chorus invariant uh, elements of the center of uh, the small quantum group, uh, where you know here you get this uh, lambda invariant precisely by this remark that I made that uh, changing the grading here corresponds to changing to to the lambda action, the translation action on this um, affine Springer fiber. Um, Okay, so this, um, and then um, the last result is that these two maps that I've uh, constructed, the first one to uh, the GL uh, invariant part of the center, and the second to the TL invariant part of the center are compatible in the obvious way. So what does this uh, mean? So um, this cohomology of the affine flag variety uh, restricts to the cohomology of the affine uh, Springer fiber since it's a sub variety. Um, but in, in fact, lands in the translation invariant elements because this action of the lattice extends to the action of a connected group on the affine flag variety and so acts trivially on the affine uh, flag variety. And so we get a compatible map here 
and the theorem is that this, uh, you know, together with that map, this gives us a commutative diagram as such. Um, okay. And then let me finish with uh, certain uh, conjectures and a few uh, further remarks. Um, so the first uh, conjecture uh, is that, in fact, this reduction here that we made um, doesn't uh, change the center. The center doesn't grow. Oh, any questions? Oh. Um, so the, yeah, the first uh, conjecture is that uh, this um, uh, center doesn't uh, grow, and in fact, the, the center of the graded category is uh, given precisely by the cohomology of this um, affine Springer fiber. And then uh, uh, the second, right, and from this uh, conjecture, it follows immediately that we would have an um, isomorphism sort of in the bottom part of this uh, diagram here uh, between the translation invariants and the torus invariants. Um, but the further conjecture is that the GL invariants can be also um, explicitly identified, namely uh, the uh, lattice action extends to a vial group action in cohomology. Right? This, this vial group action no longer is a geometric action, but there is an action in cohomology. Um, and we can take um, the invariance under this um, action. And then the statement is that these uh, invariants exactly give you the, the GL invariant. Um, Homology. And just a few uh, further remarks in type A. So uh, in type A, oops. This, uh, this map here on the left um, is an equality. The extra uh, value group acts trivially on the translation invariant elements. And so this is, so there's two proofs of this that are uh, independent. So one uh, joined with Beshkovnikov, uh, Shan, and Vassarov with, and another joined uh, with uh, Kivinen and Losev. Uh, but crucially, both of them depend on uh, Hyman's and factorial conjecture, uh, which is some statement about uh, the geometry of the um, uh, the geometry of the Hilbert uh, scheme of points on C two, uh, stating that some sort of um, um, uh, singularity is not too bad. Let's say, and let me just say that uh, the result with uh, Kivin and Losev actually allows to prove the converse. Uh, so it is in fact equivalent to the um, uh, Hyman's conjecture. And so if we assume uh, the conjecture, um, this would uh, say that this uh, Hyman conjecture is equivalent to the statement that the GL invariants um, are equal to the TL invariants. But this group uh, here is um, um, adjoint. And so any non-trivial representation, right? The the TL, uh, sorry, the TL fixed point. Uh, maybe I should write it a bit better. Um, oh, so the TL fixed points of uh, of uh, the center. You know, it's just the zero weight space, um, and each non non-zero representation of uh, uh, the group GL because it's adjoint has a non-zero zero weight space. Uh, and so if we have an equality of the GL invariance with the zero weight space, this just uh, you know, is equivalent to saying that the group acts trivially on this center. Um, right, so, uh, right, so under this conjecture, uh, this group action that I introduced before actually in type A is trivial, but um, sort of a further uh, question of interest is in other types, this uh, action is no longer uh, trivial. So can we say something, you know, is there a, a deeper connection between the, the sort of which GL representations appear or some statement along the lines 
with uh, you know with a geometry with with the analogous question of the Hyman conjecture in in other types. Uh, okay, so that as an open question, and let me uh, leave it there for questions. Are there questions? So, actually, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit confused about what you were saying just yeah. at the end. So, you, so you, you, you don't know that the. So you were saying that in type outside of type A, you know that the, that the group does not act trivially on yeah. the. There are the examples. Center. Yes. There are examples, but in type A, you don't know that the action is always. You still don't know that the action is always trivial. Correct. Yes. Okay. And so right. this this conjecture would prove uh, that this um, action is trivial. Yes. But this is still remains open. Yeah. But okay. Yeah, already in Thank B2. You. Already in B2, uh, you have a non-trivial uh, uh, representation inside the center. Yeah. Okay. Are there more questions? So, if a question, uh, do you yeah. expect, is, uh, do you think that the restriction map from the commercials F and flag YT is exactly having the W till invariance as image? Uh, right, that, that's the, yeah, that would be, I mean, this is true in, in type A, uh, it's, you know, you have an equality here and the, the this map here is surjective. So this map here is also surjective. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that would be a good uh, uh, thing to try. I, I think this is the expectation, but we don't have a proof of that either. But in type A, you do know that. Right, in type A, we do know that. In, in type A, uh, uh, we know type A, let me just, so, uh, in type A, uh, this map is surjective. Yeah, thanks. Again, following from this Hyman and Hyperbole conjecture, uh, and to work by uh, Oblonkov and Yun. Uh, Maybe it's a, a long shot, but does this work shed any light on what should categorify the center of the small quantum group? Uh, so um, I don't, uh, okay, I'm gonna answer a slightly different question, but that is related. Uh, so um, yeah, maybe, um, right, like a, a good uh, question is, okay, if we have some, some um, map from the cohomology of the affine, Springer fiber to the center, is there a, a deeper connection between the um, affine Springer fiber and this category of, you know, this graded category of representations? And the answer is yes. Um, so, right, let me, let me, well, let me just state, uh, well, uh, a theorem, but let me not be very precise, but uh, say that, uh, so this is, well, I guess, I don't, well, it's part of ongoing work by, uh, Peshwakovnikov, uh, Green, and uh, Joe Yun. Um, but uh, let me just say so that uh, there exists a causal duality. Uh, equivalence. Uh, between this category, you know, u zero q mod graded, and uh, the category of uh, micro local sheaves. Let me not find micro local sheaves on this space. Um, and uh, right, maybe uh, the more precise statement is. Uh, let me define P minus as just the kernel 
of gt dg under t minus goes to zero. And uh, uh, right, and psi, a character sort of character corresponding from p minus to ga that sort of corresponds to ts. Again, let me not be very precise on this, but uh, right, this category that I'm calling micro local sheaves on uh, this uh, Springer fiber is some uh, subcategory of this category of equivariant uh, um, uh, constructible sheaves with respect to this character psi um, on the affine flag variety and sort of right by Hamiltonian reduction, if you want the the uh, right, like the Hamiltonian reduction of this by you know p minus uh, contains as a Lagrangian this Springer fiber. Uh, and so like the, the sheaves that you uh, expect to come up are sheaves uh, that uh, you know have microlocal support on this affine uh, Springer fiber. And that's sort of uh, maybe a connection where sort of a geometric a categorification of this, this uh, statement about the centers to a statement about the, the, the categories. And right, the, the, the fact that um, you know the the the, the fact that the um, the causal duality here appears is is the same reason that you know the construction of the map from the cohomology of the affine and flag right like mapping a cohomology which shifts cohomological degree to something in the center which doesn't shift you need some sort of causal duality there and so this is so also something to be expected from this categorification I don't, I don't know if that answers that your question or a different one. So. It, it answered a good question. <laughs> okay. right. Thanks. Thanks. Are there any more? Uh, if not, let's thank Pablo again. <laughs>